everyone, this is Tara Lynn. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat. And today we are painting um, the mouse with a striped ornament. Um, so I'm glad that you could join me. I'm gonna go ahead and take myself off the screen here and I'm gonna enlarge my desk. There we go. All right, so if you're joining me tonight, um, there is a supply list, but basically you need some acrylic paint and ornament to paint on um, some paint brushes and um, that's it. So feel free to just to get a variety of colors. Um, I have all the colors on my desk with me, but you can certainly change them according to how you wanna make your ornament. Um, if you got the outlines, um, there was a link for those. You can choose whichever size closely matches with your ornament here. I'm gonna be doing a larger ornament just so it's easier to see on camera. Um, and this guy is super cute. He's pretty easy to make. Um, so let's get started. Um, we're working with acrylic paint, so you're gonna need something to put your paint on and some various size paint brushes, um, probably medium and small sizes today as we're working fairly small. So let's see, I'll put my paint up here. Um, if you're watching with me live, go ahead and say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I am gonna go ahead and get out uh, my phthalo green, which is kind of a blue green. I'm gonna get out some phthalo blue. I'm going to get out white and I'm going to get out black. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to start with is just filling in the background. When I work with acrylics, I like to work background to foreground. Oh, watching from Missouri, that's awesome. I am here in Cincinnati and we've got lots of rain, lots and lots of rain today. All right, so um, I'm just gonna create a background um, with some variation in the colors. Now, if you look up at the sample uh, up here in the corner, um, it's mostly a, a blue-green tone and then there's some lighter and darker variations of that. So I'm gonna pull two parts of my phthalo blue to about one part of my phthalo green, mix that together. And of course you can change up the color of your background. There's no right or wrong here. Um, and then I don't have a whole lot of background. Um, when I take this sample and I turn it into a round, I lose a lot of that. So I'm just gonna kind of paint in some splotches of this color without any light or dark added. And then what I'm gonna do is I can pull just a little bit off to the side, add in some white, lighten that color up, add in some patches of that lighter shade. Wipe off my brush. And then I can pull a little bit off to the side, add a pinch of black and just deepen that. Can add a little bit of this darker shade in there. And then there also is kind of a more greener shade that I see, so I can pull some of this off, add a little bit of green to it, maybe just a pinch of white. 
and I can fill in some of this extra area with more of that light green tone. And because this is background, you can really play with it and make it kind of any way that you like. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the sample at all. That's kind of the fun thing about backgrounds. And so I've got quite a few, quite a bit of these mixed colors left over on that palette there. So I'm just going to kind of layer some of these up and just have a whole lot going on here. Now I am stopping um, my background. There is some white snow on the ground there. So I am going to leave a horizon line. Right now it doesn't have to be super clean. I'm just going to kind of layer this up and play with it until I'm happy. There's no right or wrong really as long as we hide the cleanness of that ornament on the background, um, hide all that white that was there, then we are good to go. Hi Jackie, how are you? Are you painting with us tonight or did you just hop on to say hello? All right, I'm going to give this just a second to dry. I've got another little area here that I can fill in. So I'm pretty happy with that there. Um, let's see, I'm gonna get a nice clean paintbrush and I'm just gonna add the snow in across the bottom. Um, now I have very little snow, mostly feet down there, um, but I can go ahead and get some white on my brush and just clean up that horizon line, bring that down a little bit. And then I will add just a little bit of blue tint on there pull that down just so it's not completely white. Uh, we want to make sure it looks intentional and not like we just forgot to paint something. Um, so I'm going to let the blues in the background there dry. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I could add a little more. I might add a little more green. I know I say I'm happy and then I'm like, I'm going to do something different. Um, but anyway, you can see it's just a, a very graphic uh, abstract background kind of going on there. Um, but we're going to start painting some of this mouth. And so I'm going to get some brown paint. Uh, let's see. So I've got burnt umber. Um, you can work with any brown, um, nicer, usually 
come in a variety of colors. So I've got my brown here and um, we're going to start with our deepest color brown. I'm going to do most of this guy in that deep brown and then I'm going to layer up with lighter colors. So I'm just going to get this brown right from the bottle there. Again, I'm using burnt umber, but it's okay to use any shade of brown. Burnt umber is usually more of a traditional brown. When you think of brown, you think of burnt umber. Um, raw umber has more of a black tint. Um, raw sienna has more of a yellow tint and burnt sienna has more of a, an orangey tint. To start with his ears and this is dark this is um, the darkest shade that we're going to see this is our shadow shade so then we're going to fill him all in with the darkest and then we're going to layer up with our lighter colors and highlights Got a piece of hair or something on here. My goodness. All right, there we go. Pull that off. Okay, well, if you paint, I would love to see how they turn out. Make sure you share so we can all see. All right, so as far as his face goes, um, the bottom of his face is kind of the lightest, and I don't want to lose um some of these uh, outlines so i am going to paint kind of up the middle of his nose around that eyebrow and then i'll kind of curve off here with this dark color so we'll kind of give him a, a mask there for now for now And then, of course, he's got a tail, um, and most of the tail gets cut off um, in this ornament, but I'm just going to put kind of the impression of a tail right off here. And on my ornament, his little feet get cut off, but he does have some little, little brown feet that poke out here. All right, now he's pretty dark. So what I want to do is just pull off a little bit of this brown to the side and then add some white. Now, as we lighten brown, it's going to turn into kind of a cream. So I'm going to mix up a few different shades of this brown. So here's my next darkest. a little bit lighter and then I want this one to be my lightest almost white So I've got four shades of brown, one, two, three, four, um, and I've got white that I can work with. So you just wanna have some variation. Oh, you're gonna paint it for your granddaughter, that's awesome. 
That's awesome. She's going to love it. Jessica, when you're finished, I'd love to see it. All right, so I'm gonna work from dark to light. So this, the brown right out of the bottle was my darkest. This one here was my next shade up. And so I'm just gonna um, start working. Um, I'm gonna almost draw hair-like brush strokes up here on his ears with that lighter color. So we want to give kind of the impression of fur. So this is my second layer. <laughs> Hi. I like him too. He's pretty cute. So I'm just adding kind of this gentle second layer of fur like brush strokes. I'm going to do this all over. So up the nose here. Anywhere I put that darker color, I'm now going to come through and just add little jagged fur like brush strokes. Kind of following the shape of that fur pattern. I'm also going to fill this in um, with some of those down here as well. Down by his little cheekies. It's not perfect coverage, but right now this will work. Oops. Still want to stick with that color. May need to mix a little bit more. There we go. It may seem um, counterintuitive to paint him that deep dark brown and then start layering the lighter color over. Um, but really the reason I do that is because the more layers you have in a painting, the more rich it'll look. It'll just give them a little more depth. So anywhere I've got that dark brown, I'm gonna add that lighter color. I don't really have to do it to the ends of his little mouse hands there because um, we're, those are going to end up being mostly white. All right. Um, so I've got a nice round brush, small, and I'm going to go up one more shade. Now this color, um, most of his head is this color. So I'm going to, again, just start with little furry brush strokes all the way up. And don't worry about being super realistic. This guy is a little cartoony. He's not um, a super realistic mouse, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So just adding another lighter layer kind of up in the middle of his face. A little bit down here by his cheeks.
I'm going to pull just a little bit up here on his ears. A little bit up here on his ears. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on my palette. Ugh. My brown just needs just a pinch of yellow, I think, to closer match the tone of that mouse. I probably don't need to be so particular about it, but... So over here on his arm, he's got kind of a lighter patch. So I'm just pulling some color over here. And then on the bottom of this arm, he's got some lighter shading. All right, he's looking pretty goofy. I'm going to clean up some of this face um, to help him look more mouse-like. Um, but one of the colors we're going to use for the ears is cream, so I'm going to or peach. So I'm going to get some of that peach out and lighten it, and I can put that coloring in his ears. Got a little sloppy right here, so I'm just gonna fix that. All right, now down here. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah, the replay will be available um, anytime after, so feel free to hop on and make your little mouse. I'm glad you jumped on with us. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take some black. And I'm going to add the black to his eyes. He looks a little goofy right now, but we're going to get him kind of past this awkward phase and looking like a mouse here pretty soon. All right, while I've got the black out, I'm working with the thinnest brush I've got right now. Um, I'm going to come through and I'm going to kind of outline those little, his, I don't know what that is, his lips, his little mouse lips. I guess, and his little mouth right there, I'm going to do in some black. Um, before we're totally finished, I will come back and add some outlines as well. Um, he's got some red in his nose and his ears, so I'm just going to get a pinch of red out. Oops, I said a pinch and then I poured a whole lot. Um, so you can use kind of pure red. I might lighten it just a tiny bit, but I don't want it to go pink. I still want it to be pretty red. And so I can paint his little nose. And then up here in his ears, he's just got like this red shadow thing going on. Right here. And then in the darkest area of his ears, 
he's got a little blackness, a little black shadow, kind of where that ear goes inward. So just going to add that in there. All right, now that his eyes are filled in there, I can kind of see which parts of his face need to be further filled in. layering up with these lighter colors, letting hints of the under color show through. All right, we've got a third color here that's a little bit lighter. Again, I'm going to add just a pinch of yellow. If he's got that kind of yellowish undertone. His cheeks on both sides are the lightest. So just look at your mouse and add in kind of your lightest highlights there. And then we want white. So I'm going to pull some white. Now he's got a white outline on this inner ear. So I'm going to come through. Just pull this white outline. Now he's got white um, that kind of goes around his eye here, up and around. So think big white eyebrows. He's got some white down here by his little mouse lips. And then off to the side, he's got white fur on his cheeks. So I'm going to add the lightest fur right there. All right, now he's got white on his hands. So it's like he's got little mittens on. So I'm just going to I'm going to pull some of that white up here. And his little white hands up here. All right, now he does have kind of a glimmer in his eye, so I'm going to use the wrong side of my paintbrush. I'm going to dip that into the white and I'm going to add that little glimmer in his eye there and that helps him feel more real right now he kind of looks like a mouse before he was kind of creepy All right, so I'm going to let mouse dry a little bit and I'm going to come through and paint this ornament. Um, so I can go up a size in my brush. I was using a teeny tiny brush. I'm going to go up one level. All right. I'm going to keep this guy turned to the side just so my little string doesn't get into my paint. I'm going to come up here and add the yellow in first and I'm going to do that because yellow is a very transparent color and so if I do need to add a second layer I want it to be sort of dry. So 
I've got yellow, skip a line, yellow again. Of course, you can make your ornaments any color you like. I'm just kind of following this sample here. And the sample was digitally created. So, of course, um, when we translate that to actual painting, it's going to look slightly different, but should still be pretty darn cute. All right, so there's the yellow. The next color um, to me looks like phthalo green, so I'm just going to dip right into that green. And add in my phthalo stripes here. Now, if you don't have a phthalo green and you're just using um, a green oxide or a grass green or a sap green, that's fine. All right, so adding a layer of that in there. There is the smallest stripe of this kind of right in there. Then we've got a red stripe and then another green stripe. So I'm going to leave that red and then put the green right in there while I'm working with it. Might as well get it all down there at once, right? And then here in the back is another green stripe. All right, now we need our red. All right, now we got those ornament colors down, but there are a lot of little fun um, kind of whimsical lines in here. And so that's what we're gonna do next. Um, so here on the green, I'm gonna dip into my green, my phthalo green, and I'm gonna add some white right on my paintbrush. And then what I'm gonna do is right where the green meets the yellow here, I'm gonna pull in a stripe because I see one of those on that sample there.
there's a little highlight in the green um, in this area so can add that in there and then I'm gonna get a whole bunch of this and there is just a lighter shade of green up here so pulling in a highlight right there and there actually is down here just a little bit as well All right, there are some yellow lines that are in some additional places as well. So I'm gonna get some yellow on my brush. I might add just the tiniest bit of white on there. That just gives it a little more opacity. All right, so right here where the green and red meet, there's a kind of a pool of yellow down in there. So. add that I'm gonna mix a little white a little more white into that yellow and just pull in kind of a highlight here maybe just a little highlight on the top just a variation you know these ornaments are, are kind of glass they're reflective so lots of little hints of light and then the same thing for the red I'm just gonna Lighten that up a bit. I am going to add a little yellow um, just so it doesn't go too pink. There we go. All right, I like how he's turning out here. All right, what we still have left to add is some trees in the background and some stars in the sky. I'm gonna add some white lines on here and some black lines to kind of finish um, the ornament up, but gonna let that dry a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and work on some of those trees. Um, so I've got a lot of my phthalo green out. I'm going to go ahead and add some yellow to my phthalo green just to use that up instead of getting a whole nother green out. If you have a grassy green, you can certainly use that on your palette. But adding a little yellow to the phthalo will get us where we want to go. And I'm all about saving paint. All right, so what I want to do is I just want to decide where my trees are going to go. And because I'm working um, on this ornament size, I'll probably just have two trees. There's three in the sample, um, but because we're, I'm kind of squashing down this size here. Um, so I'm going to have a taller tree over here. So I'm just going to kind of create that tree trunk. Just a straight line. And then I'm gonna create a smaller one over on this side. So not quite as big over there. And these trees are kind of fun and abstract. Um, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to show this on camera. I know it's a little bit hard to see. I wanna raise this up a bit. that's helpful or not um, I'm gonna pull some of this green off to the side and add white to it you do not have to do this I'm doing this for the sake of the camera um, so the way that I'm gonna make these trees um, is kind of in layers so I'm gonna do my top layer here which is just little and thin I'm gonna skip a little area and then I'm just gonna tap some green skip a little area Tap some green, dip a little area, tap some more green, and kind of work the tree that way. Now this is a very light green. You would probably be using a darker green. 
I'm going to do the same thing with this little bitty one over here. So the lower on the tree we go, the wider it gets. All right, so I did this with a light color. I'm going to come back through with just a slightly darker green. Go over the top because I wanted to use this green to begin with, but I just wanted it to show up on camera for you. <laughs> Isn't he goofy? I like him. This mouse is cute. I like, I'm kind of on a mouse kick this holiday season. I know nutcrackers are really popular right now, but I'm kind of crazy about these mice. All right, so I've got these green colors in there. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I don't need to wash it, but I'm gonna dip into some yellow. On a lot of these trees, yellow is kind of our fun color. So I'm just gonna tap in some yellows in there. Now I will let this dry and I'll come through and tap in a little bit of white as well, but I want that to be dry before I do that. All right, up in the sky, we've got some stars. Um, we've got white stars and we've got yellow Star of David six-pointed stars. So you can certainly make any stars you want up in the sky. Um, I'm gonna get a nice thin brush again. one. My bristles are getting a little goofy. All right, let me fix those. All right, so first I'm going to dip into some white. I'm going to add just a pinch of water. I want to thin it down a bit. I don't want it to be too thin, but I want it to be able to make nice thin lines. All right, so I've got my little tiny brush here. Um, I'm just going to come in and create kind of some, some little drawn in stars. And they don't have to be in the same place as the sample. They don't have to be in the same place that I'm making them now. I'm adding kind of a mix of stars made out of lines, some that are just dots. It's just visual interest for this background. Don't overthink it. There are also some white dots on this ornament, so it kind of looks like it's snowing a bit. So I'm just going to put those on here as well. Well, I've got the white. Pull in some of these light reflections on this ornament. And then I want to uh, make my, my hanging stars here. So I've got one on this side. I'm gonna make this one significantly smaller just because my tree um, in this sample is larger. So to make a Star of David star, it's just a triangle and then an upside down triangle. I'm gonna do this in white first so that my yellow, when I paint it on, is not competing with that background color. So white is just a way to clean that, that background of the star up. So I'm gonna paint that there, and then of course it's got a little thing hanging down. 
And then over here, I'm gonna make one that's a little bit bigger. And I thought even though this, this guy's got his little Christmas ornament, um, this was kind of a nice nod to Hanukkah that started two nights ago for my friends that are celebrating. All right. So I've got my two stars. And then once I have that nice layer of white on there, I can come back through and put the yellow on top and it'll be much brighter. If I were to put the yellow on the blue, it would just have a real green tint to it. home stretch here. Um, so I'm going to get some more white. I said I would put some on my Christmas trees. Um, I'm just going to kind of tap some in here and make it look like snow. So this is where I am so far. He needs some whiskers for sure. And then I might come around and just add um, a few little lines with black. So I'm gonna take my black paint and I'm gonna thin it just a bit because I don't, it's hard to make thin lines with heavy paint. So add a little water, thin that out. So help me get those nice thin lines and so I'm just going to add some quick little whisker marks on both sides of his face here. And then all over um, he's got kind of like that coloring book type outline. Um, so here and there, I'm just going to add some, some black outline lines around some of the most um, smooth parts of this painting. And that just is going to help accent some of these little bits. So around his elbow, maybe around his fingertips. Try to make a somewhat smooth outline around this ornament. these lines just kind of clean them up a bit and make them look a little more, a little more finished. And 
when I do outlining, I don't worry too much about it all being perfect. You know, not everything has a complete outline. Sometimes it has just enough to make it stand out. Sometimes the lines break a little bit. I'm totally okay with that. most part I feel like this is pretty much finished I'm happy with him um, here on out it's just your own finishing touches so don't be afraid to go back and kind of add a little bit here a little bit there um, just kind of spruce it up a little bit wherever you think it needs a little something. That is our mouse with the striped ornament. So I am finished. Thank you everyone who joined me live. I hope those of you who have painted along will share your ornament with me um, in the group. Thank you, Jackie, for hopping on, Jessica. Anyone else I may have missed? I know there's a lot of, I see a lot of people who don't have names. So those of you who I cannot see, thank you so much for hopping on as well. My husband says, smash that like button. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button. <laughs> All right. I have two more of these ornaments coming up. Um, if you enjoyed this and you want to make all three, the next one will be yeah, December yeah. 16th at 6 p.m. And then the one after that will be December 23rd at 6 p.m. Um, I'd love for you to join me and paint with me and i can't wait to see what you create so thanks so much everybody for participating if you haven't followed my facebook page um, it is paint rinse repeat and i would love to have a follow um, have a great night and i will see you next time